Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and check, check, check. How's my mic doing, guys? Can you hear me when I talk low? And can you hear me when I talk loud? I have, uh... So, I, as I said in my last video, I revamped my recording setup, and I, 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 di I had no filters or anything on my mic for the, um... Uh, Team Fortress 2 video, uh, and I knew I had to put some on, but I thought it sounded okay enough without it, but then when the video was recorded, it was fine, but I wanted to do a bit better job. So today is a, a test of some new filters. If there's still some bugs to work out, we will work them out. But today we are playing Xenogears from the Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die book. And uh, I don't know anything about this one other than the fact that it's an RPG. Um, and we're just going to jump in and see what it, see what it is today. Um, assuming it hasn't frozen, we'll give it a second here uh, to load. But yeah, there was a time when we were doing this thousand one quest when I would like literally research every single game before I loaded it up. But it, I think that does take away a little bit from each game because there is something fun about going into games blind. Um, and the other thing is like, we're, this is like the seventh year of doing this. <laughs> like I've talked about this before, but whew, I mean, I like doing it. And when I don't record a video for a while, cause sometimes I record them in big batches and then I put them out. Um, so I don't play for like two weeks cause I've like recorded like four weeks of videos. But when I don't do them, I definitely miss them. Um, this is a plane in space, I think, by the way. We should pay attention to the story a little bit. Xenogears. Oh, cool. It's like a whole city in space. Wait, did I play this one already? I hope not. <laughs> hope this isn't a duplicate. But, uh... But, yeah, you know... You know what I feel like sometimes? Uh, with my channel is... Have you guys seen Loki? Um, if you have... I'll, I'll try to not spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it. But there's a character... Um, he who remains and uh, he has a line at one point when uh, he says buddy I'm older than I look and I'm tired <laughs> and I'm like that's me that's me with the thousand and one quest what did I agree to seven years ago when I thought I'd play a thousand video games I and mean, we're still going there's an alien parasite by the way Cool anime uh, graphics here, sort of mixed with 3D, actually. This is quite neat. I'm getting very, like, Ghost in the Shells vibes. But yeah, I am... Uh, I, I guess not to, you know, toot my own horn too much, but sometimes I feel like the he who remains of gaming. Where I'm like, you know, the, the sacred timeline of Thousand and One Video Games just play before you die. I've spent seven years maintaining it. And I'm just old and burned out. Uh, but not in the sense that I'm planning on quitting or, or not finishing it or anything, but from time to time I get tired and this is definitely a tired period, so so I didn't bother looking anything up I don't know. We'll just play it so far. I'm enjoying what we're seeing. It's Very cool sci-fi stuff. I mean, I should obviously be listening to the story, but we all know that ain't gonna happen We like to in this channel We like to sort of get a general impression of what's going on using only our visuals while Jay blathers on about random nonsense um, and then we go in with no clues to what's happening, and then we judge the game. <laughs> that, that's how we do it. They could tell us in the tutorial how to beat the game very clearly. Then we go into the game, and because we weren't listening, have no idea what's going on, and then we say the game sucks. That's how we do it on this channel, yo. The gameplay has to speak for itself. We don't listen to your fancy tutorials. We're outlaws like that. Bandits. Banditos. Um, I am evacuating the, ship. the style of this, by the way, can I just say, is great. I really like this. I feel like I'm watching, uh, like a 90s sci-fi or Japanese cartoon. The kind of stuff they don't make anymore, because everything is... I mean, for better or worse, everything is just 3D'd up. But this is cool. <laughs> got the anime always does this thing where uh, Okay, they're evil tentacles evil space tentacles anime always does this thing where sometimes characters faces don't even move like the guy was st sitting there staring out the window and his mouth was open and he wasn't even breathing It was just like frozen statuesque There's like a very interesting style to anime where it is simultaneously way higher quality than the animation you see in the West but also 
way lower quality or not lower quality but like sometimes they reuse frames or backgrounds or they have characters just clearly be static you know and, and so it's like the quality of what they're drawing is usually way more complex and sophisticated than what you see in the West, but they cut corners on, like, frame rates and stuff like that because, I mean, I think you would have to. Before the era of computers, when this was all hand-drawn, there's no way, you know, even a factory of workers could draw it all at once, so. But anyway, that was, that was an awesome opening. Um, I like it. And so let's see where this is going. Oh my god. Is that us? The hottest nudist girl ever survived that plane crash or the spaceship crash. It's like everything around her is decimated. Everyone's killed. Her clothes exploded in the landing. Ooh, she got a nice butt though. Long hair, very long hair. Man, that hair is longer than she is. It's, oh my God, all the way to the ground and further. I mean, I like a girl with long hair, but that's really long. Might be a little too long even for me. It's like Marge Simpson hair if you ever did it up, you know? It'd be, like, taller than you. Wow, that is Xenogears, eh? Well, color me impressed. I'm realizing I do not have my controller set up. That's why we can't actually start the game, so... Time out. All right, I think we got it. Um, so we're using an emulator here called Midnafin, and it's a great... Great emulator for PS1 games, but it has a really annoying controller setup where it doesn't pop up a menu and let you like click things. It literally is like a text prompt and it's like press a button for up. And you press a button for up and it's like press a button for an, an alternate button for up. So you have to press up again. Then it's like down, left, right, uh, triangle, rapid fire triangle, square, X, circle. It's like, oh my God. And you go through all of these. And if you press one wrong button at the wrong time, you're like, well, Got to start over. So I started like three times there setting up my buttons, but we finally got it. Um, and yes, so uh, this is being played on an emulator. Part of my new setup, as I talked about um, when I played Team Fortress and I've sort of been mentioning recently, is that we are shifting to recording a lot more stuff on my main computer uh, because I've been having trouble with my Elgato. And so I'm still using it to record off like original systems like the Xbox or like Xbox 360, PS3, that stuff. But even up to PS2, I'm starting to dabble into like emulation because it's just so much simpler to record directly off the computer. But anyway, the continent of Ignis in the northern hemisphere of our world. On this, the largest continent, a war has been raging two countries for hundreds of years. Raging between two countries. It's important to read all the words in the sentence. In the north of the continent lies Kislev Empire. In the south lies the desert kingdom of Ave. The two wars have gone on. The war had the one war. There's only one war. The one war has gone on for so long that the people have forgotten the cause, knowing only the pointless circle of hostility and tragedy. Oh, you can you can pause this if you want. If you want to pause this text screen and really soak it all in, that is an option. I just thought start would make us go f keep going. The chronic war obsession was soon. Oh, let's pause this for a second. The chronic war obsession was soon to encounter a devastating change. This was due to the ethos, an institution that preserves our world's culture, repairing tools and weapons excavated from the ruins of ancient and ancient civilizat. I'm sorry, am I getting annoying here? I'm going to stop being silly here. And once both countries excavated these ruins and had the ethos repair the discoveries in order to increase the military power. The various weapons excavated greatly changed the form of the warfare. It's funny you can pause this, but you can't skip it. Because I'm like, alright, I, I, sure. Man-to-man -man combat. Giant humanoid fighting machines, yes! Hey, oh, that's relevant for us. Again, I don't mean to bring it up every video these days, but uh, the my own game that I, I've been working on, The Battle Mercs, is about mechs. So, if this game, it, you, you want to be about mechs too? That'd be great. I'm all into mechs right now. Suddenly, a mysterious military force appeared in the continent of Ignis called Gebler. This force was decided to make contact with Ave. Okay. 
With the assistance of this Gebla military force, Ave was able to recover from being hopelessly outnumbered to being back on an even standing, then taking further advantage of the newly gained momentum. Ave started to capture one territory after another from Kislev. Okay. Now, oh, here we go. Back to something a little more interesting. If you're going to tell me a story, at least give me a cool visual. The remote village of something. I mean, that went by pretty quick. Would have appreciated a pause screen on that. Oh, they're just nuking it. This is where it all begins. All right, let's do it. Sci-fi, ancient medieval world with mechs and nukes and mysterious space forces and naked girls with long hair. I'm down, man. Oh, the world is wobbly. Hopefully this is intentional, not a f function of me running this on an emulator. Oh man, look at that giant mech! That is so cool. If this is not supposed to be wobbly like this, this is weird. Actually, it's weirder if it is supposed to be wobbly like this. Oh, the screen exploded! Jeez. Oh, there he is. Okay, things look less wobbly now, so I think that was just a weird choice and dramatic effect. Oh, he- Oh, we're gonna fist fight robots? Yes, we are. Huff, huff. This one's down. Alright, Xenoblade. You have convinced me. Let's do this. You know, mechs are an interesting... thing. I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, just an interesting choice in characters in early polygonal gaming because early polygonal gaming could do squares and blocks really good, but it couldn't do like faces and humans. So mechs is a great choice because like they are supposed to be all blocky and weird looking. Uh, that's what makes them cool, you know, so um, no matter how often I knock you down, you still get up. I could do this all day. Oh! <laughs> There's just a random dude on the battlefield. You must not fight here! This is my field! Not my field! Oh, we got guns too, I like it. Boy, are you persistent. Beat him up! You know, again, not to hover on this topic of battle tech here, but uh, we're talking about mechs. Made me think of how there was that mech movie with Charlie Day. Um, a while back. I forget the name of it even. It was like giant lizards were coming out of the water, the oceans, and they had to fight them with big mechs or something. I never saw it. I just saw trailers. But why has there never been a Battletech TV show slash movie? Like, I, this has come up so many times on Reddit. But ba honestly, Battletech... You could take, like, from the era of 3025 up to the clan invasion and the Battle of Tukiyid or whatever. Um, that could all literally be a giant Game of Thrones-style show. And HBO, you're honestly missing out. Sci-fi Game of Thrones. Could be awesome. Don't know why it doesn't exist. I think in the 90s or early 2000s, Microsoft was trying to develop a Mech Warrior show. It just never materialized. Sort of like how they've been trying to generate a, a Halo TV show forever, and they only finally did it. And actually, I think I've heard reasonably good things about it. I just didn't actually watch it myself. For no particular reason. Um, Alright, I guess this guy was painting this whole battle. That was kind of a cool 3D effect. Phew! That about does it. All right, now for a short break. Okay. Oh, here we go. Hold on, let me switch to... Oh, that does nothing. Okay, so you have to use the D-pad, I think. You know what, that's okay. Okay, and this button runs. And I've gone upstairs. Oh, hello. What up, yo? Timothy! Yo! Hi there, Faye! Sorry for us all using your house like this, but we have to talk about the big day tomorrow with the village chief. Yeah, tomorrow, huh? Your wedding with Alice. Now that is a big day. Timothy, yeah, right. But it still hasn't hit me as reality, though. Hey, er, Timothy, I just want to thank you both. 
few years ago, I woke up in this village without a trace of my memory. I didn't know who I was or where I'd been or what it... Okay, so I think the the prologue there did actually happen. He just obviously has amnesia. Classic. Got a little bonk on the head. A big mech came down and punched him in the face and he just forgot who he was. Couldn't recall a single thing. Despite that, you and Alice sympathized with me and encouraged me to go on. Two of you hadn't been there for me. I don't know what it would become of me. I wonder if they are the opposing side and I got taken and I got brought to the enemies who shot me down and now I'm being raised. You know, like maybe that's that's it. Maybe Timothy is the guy who attacked me. In fact, I wasn't paying attention to his face. It might have revealed it in the opening montage there that definitely was Timothy who was attacking me. Quit it, will ya? You don't have to go and get all mushy on me. Anyway, it makes me feel like I've always been friends with you ever since we were kids. Uh, now we'll go on being friends forever, right? Of course. Well, this clearly is not going to work out. But there's one thing I've learned from movie and films is like... Something set up this positive at the very beginning of episode one. They're going to be enemies somehow. Or so one of them's going to die. That could also happen. Probably not me, since I'm the main character. It's got cool camera effects and stuff, and, like, the the dudes are obviously sprites, but everything is, like, scaled and rotated and moved into this 3D world. This is, like, pretty impressive for PS1, I have to say. Um, alright. You know, Faye, I'm sure that our village chief thinks of you as his own grandson. Not having any children for all those years and living on his own, that's why he cares so very dearly about you. My only concern with this game is that literally we're going to spend like 40 minutes in dialogue and see no combat. So we got to try and get to some kind of combat to feel this game out. But the trick with these long RPGs on this channel is like, what hope do they have in like an hour, hour and a half video of like seeing all that much of it, you know? So we'll try as we always do. But you know what, guys? We're just along for the journey, right? This is just... Well, this is just an excuse to hang out and talk about games and try something new, so. Um, Alright, this little dwarf person's in here harassing me about something. But out, Timothy! Till you marry my sister, you have, you have nothing to do with me at all. I just have some business here with my friend, Faye. So, Faye, I er, have something to talk to you about later. What is it, Dan? It sounds serious. Yeah, that's why I can't talk about it here. There's a certain person listening who caused trouble. Okay. Seriously, we really gotta talk one-on-one, -on -one, man to man. I'll be hanging around outside to so see you there later, okay? See ya, Timothy. Take care of yourself until tomorrow. I think he flipped him off as he was leaving there. Huh. What's up with him? As of tomorrow, I'm gonna be that kid's brother-in-law. Ha, that part isn't going to be a no honeymoon. Alright, let's go outside and see what happens. Can I rotate the camera? Oh, you totally can! That's cool. Hey, let's talk to this dog. I guess he can't. Wow. Yeah, I'm quite impressed by the 3D-ness of this on the PlayStation 1. It's pretty cool. Zzz, snore. Oh, you can just walk away, uh, mid-conversation if you want. That's cool. Okay, let's try and find that kid, because he said he had something important to tell me. He's running around. This is, this is, like, very cool. This is, um... This is, to me, like, the next stage of evolution after Zelda. You know, Zelda was, like, the classic top-down game. And this game is, like, 3D isomor isomorphic viewpoint. But, uh, this, this is really cool. Most games, you don't get to rotate the camera like this, and the mixing of the 2D sprites with the 3D environments... I have seen it before. It's not like the first time we've ever seen it. But I don't know if I've seen it in a game quite like this. So, alright, buddy. I'm here to talk to you. Oh, good, Faye. You ready to talk? As you know, tomorrow is finally the day of my sister's wedding. So what I want to talk to you about is exactly that. Alice's marriage. Faye, to be perfectly honest with you, I've always wished you could have been my brother. Uh, it's still not too late. You could go steal Alice and run off with her. 
Uh, if you need me to help, I'll be glad to. You know, this guy's supposed to be a kid, but his hairstyle makes him look like... I don't know, like, that is the weirdest hairstyle I've ever seen. It's like Krusty the Clown hair, with, like, big tufts of hair to the side of your head. And he kind of looks bald on the top as a result. It looks like a weird old gremlin, man. But I guess he's a kid. Maybe odd for me to say this, but my sister's beautiful and a good cook. And this was between you and me, but she's well endowed, too. Okay, that is weird for you to say, buddy. That's your sister you're talking about there. <coughs> I don't have a sister myself. Uh, but I definitely feel like talking about a sister in that way is weird. Um, but let's do it, man. All right, Dan, you've got it. I guess we'll just go sweep Alice away and make her run for it. Really? I knew I liked you, Faye. That's the spirit. But o if only it was that easy. It's not like we can change their feelings. And you would need to have love for her, too. But I'm not gonna forget this, Faye. You were really willing to go that far to help me, Faye. You're a good guy. Alright, so we're not actually gonna steal the girl. That makes sense, because I was just talking to my best friend about how, you know, he's my best friend, he's marrying this girl. Would be weird for me to just straight up steal her immediately. Um, okay. So everyone's talking about this wedding. My guess is during the wedding, some shit's gonna go down. Mechs are gonna show up. There'll be battles, betrayals, true love, death. Pretty much the standard Canadian wedding. It's weird, isn't it? I wasn't listening, but yeah, sure. Maybe I need to rethink this. Oh. Who was who was I even talking to? Was that was that the girl? Was not paying attention. Exactly what you want to hear in your RPG Let's Players. <laughs> what was that? What did that character say? What did I agree to? I wasn't paying attention. What is this? Um, should we save our game? Checking memory cards. Please don't remove. Put it in this box, I guess. <laughs> huh. I like that the save game has a bit of sound effects there. So make it sound a little epic and stuff. I don't hate that. Oh! I don't... Do we even have a weapon? Are we supposed to be, like, battling coyote dogs or something? Okay. So I can... Let's see. Chi, defense, attack, combo, escape item. It's attack, man. Okay, I can use one point, two points, three points, or cancel. Three points, baby! Headbutt a dog! Oh, we did it! A jackal. Man. He just headbutted two coyotes into the ground, man. It's a badass mofo right there. They had a hundred... Oh, no, they had no gold on them. They had nothing. Those are some poor coyotes. Um, all right, well, now I'm feeling empowered to continue to explore a little bit. Is there anything cool around here? Yeah, hey, what is that? It's like a file cabinet in the middle of the hills over here. How do you even attack? He's on, like, the other side of a mountain. Okay, I guess my guy just jumped over. What are these things? A hobgob. He just gobbed my hob for one damage point. Better headbutt him. hoy -oh! What did you do all day, Faye? I went up to the mountains and beat up some wildlife. <laughs> It's, it's funny because in, in video games, it totally makes sense. It's like, yeah, you just go, you, you kill some coyotes and some trees and you level up. Imagine you went hiking one day. Oh, you can fall off cliffs. And in real life, you like came around a corner and there was literally a guy fist fighting two coyotes. And he was like whipping a tree with like a bull whip or something like that. You know, you'd be like, you, you would turn around and call the cops. You'd get the hell out of there because that guy's nuts. Also, there's the classic thing of RPG heroes just go into people's houses and literally loot them. 
stealing everything. Like, if someone, like, oh, yeah. burst in your front door and picked up all your pottery and started smashing it looking for rupees, and then just took everything out of your cabinets and walked off, oh, yeah. <laughs> you would call the police again. Twice. And then they pick him up. They pick up this RPG. The police would pick up this RPG hero, and he'd be carrying, like, a sword, 12 sausages, you know, 16 beers, you know, like, inventories in video games are just so ridiculous and huge and they're full of everything that, like, he'd literally be traveling like a hobo. He'd just have everything, all his worldly possessions would be in his pockets. Sort of like how, uh, this, I guess, is not that similar, but in the way of, like, media doesn't make sense in real life, like, every rom-com is just basically a stalker. You know, like, you can go back and watch every rom-com. It's like they're funny or, or romantic movies. They're, they're, you know, they're cute. The guy pursues the girl, even though she says she's not interested. But in real life, if that happens, it's just like, it's creepy, man. And it's scary. It's just, it's straight up stalking. So it's like romance movies only work in the movies. They really don't make sense in real life. They're too scary. But, uh, all right, we got to find, uh... Nope. How do we get to the mechs? I guess, I, I, I think we just have to... I wish I was paying attention to what house was ours. Oh, this is it. Okay, good. I think if I go downstairs and go back to sleep, it'll be the next day, and then we can actually, um... There we go, perfect. You took your hidden money. Oh. Damn. Hide Monday. Monday. Hiding Monday under the pillowcase. Hiding money. Alright, so next day, let's go do this wedding thing. Alright, Tim Timothy. Could you go check up on Alice for me? The old man and I have still got to discuss things with her uncle, the village chief. Okay. Where might she be? Question mark. Oh, you can jump. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to bring up the menu. That is not it. Um, what rotates? I don't know if there's a map option. This is the general store, although they don't have much of a selection. Oh yeah, I forgot you can just walk away from boring conversations. That might be the best, coolest feature I've ever seen. Okay, I would like to go to the doctor... no... Okay, wait, that's the brother. The sister must be around here somewhere. Um... Is there a young, attractive woman who's well endowed, according to that little kid? Is this her? I wouldn't need anything else, so I'd only live together with my family, just the three of us. See ya! <laughs> You're not who I thought you were. Welcome, Faye. You want to have some fun? I give the best service in Lahan, you know? Hey, Ellen, quick teasing the innocent kid. Yeah, I know. It's just a joke, you blockhead. Was I just propositioned for sex? <laughs> what? What was that? Maybe next time I'll be ra- ra Whoa! I'll be waiting, rawr! Maybe next time, okay? Bye. Oh my god, she's into me. Dudes! Let's have a beer and get laid. What kind of game are we playing here? This turned into Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> Very quickly. What? Robots? Forget it. Okay, are you Alice? Well, hello, Faye. Are you here to see Alice? Actually, it's customary that we don't let any men in to see the bride today, but you can be the exception. What, because I'm so feminine in appearance? Look, the long hair is a stylistic choice, okay? I'm a man in every way that it counts. Alice's aunts. Why, hello, Faye. Have you been... Oh, 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 okay. Bye, Faye. <laughs> hello, Alice. Oh, literally, that's what you said. Is that your wedding dress? Oh, Faye, you startled me. Yes, it is. I just finished it. It took more work than I expected. You're gonna look beautiful for your wedding. I never told you this, but I've always harbored feelings deep down for you. Didn't want to get in the way of what you and Timothy had. Just thought I'd be the bigger man, but I don't feel very big today. 
It's my guess as to what this conversation is going to be. I think it it's, was a pretty good guess. Doesn't seem to be accurate, though. Um, they're just humming and hawing. Oh, nothing. Humming and hawing. Have you seen Dan? He's outside bragging as always. That kid. Um, I was hoping he could go borrow a camera and some lights from Dr. Zuki up on the mountain peak. If that's all it is, I'll be glad to do it. Could you? But I couldn't possibly. Don't worry, it's no problem. Having Dan handle such delicate instruments might have to see some of you's cooking if I go to the doc's place. Hee <laughs> hee, that's my fay. I'll go up there and get them for ya. Oh, Faye, wait! Huh? Is there something else you wanted me to get from Satan? No, it's not that. Faye, have you ever thought about things this way? If, if you had only been born in this village, and if we had only known each other earlier on, During these, like, melodramatic moments, I can't help but think of, like, the most ridiculous responses. Like, Team America World Police styled ridiculous. Like, if, if we were together, we would bang every day and it would be a non-stop... It'd be 69, 24-7. <laughs> I don't know. I apologize for the, the crudeness of it all. But it's like, the, you know, it's like so PG, PG-13. Like, what if, what if we had met first? We could be true loves. But it's sort of so melodramatic and cheesy, I can't help but take it to the, like, extreme level of crudeness. I think that's why I thought Team America was so hilarious. It was, like, just all the jokes I would have made if I was, uh, writing those scenes. Not that I could write anything nearly as funny or coherent as the South Park guys. I used to think of South Park as, like, bottom of the barrel, like, crudest, uh, dumbest humor ever when it first came out. And the more I watched it, and the more years have gone on, the more, like, clever and interesting I, I think it really is. And I think I misjudged it initially. And even if you don't like South Park, that's fine. I mean, the humor is not for everyone. But I think they so many of their episodes have like interesting messages and stuff and it's not just like pushing an agenda one way or another but it's like often challenging you and getting you to like question things it's it's really weird but yeah if you if you don't watch too many south park episodes if you just give a couple a chance they actually do have like really interesting questions about them and again it's not even like pushing an agenda i would almost say it's more like how Star Trek, the older Star Treks, like Next Generation and stuff, used to present sort of moral quandaries to the audience, and they wouldn't necessarily have a clean, definitive answer. I kind of feel like that's what South Park does, oddly enough. So, anyway, that's my defense of the blatantly immature and crude humor of South Park and my own mind. So, there you go. Anyway, I think this is the mountain. Oops. Let's go. Oh my god, I'm trying to read the sign and I got attacked. More coyotes. We leveled up, I think, last time we fought these guys. A jackal. Three damage. Let's see what happens if we do not a main attack. Oh, interesting. So you can do, like, two attacks. So you can probably do combos. That's actually kind of cool. So it's sort of like a fighting game, but turn-based? We gotta experiment with that a bit more. I've just been doing the max attack every time, but... Alright, this way to the doctor's house right after the bridge. Let's do this. It's important to read in this world. Um... Oh, wait over the bridge to the north. How do I actually get up there, though? This way? Oh, here we go. Alright, let's try some different attacks here. The one-point attack. 
again and again. Don't know if that actually killed it. Okay, so if I do a one point and a one point. I still have one action point. Do I get to do anything with it? Huh. I don't understand what the point of, like, reserving an action point is. Because it kind of locks you into, like, attacking the one guy. So let's try this. If I do this... And then I back off. Yeah, I don't get to do anything else, so I, I don't 100% know. Maybe it'll become apparent later. Maybe they explained in the tutorial that... The intro video that I just talked over, rudely. I guess I'm like the gaming equivalent of the guy who like talks in theaters. I hate that guy. It's usually a kid, I find. I'm not like a kid kid, but a teenager. But man, people who talk in movie theaters... And like, I go to movies with friends, and I'll like lean over and whisper little things and stuff to them. But A... I try not to have a conversation. I thought I just died there for a second. Try not to have like a full-fledged conversation, A. And B, you keep it very quiet. You just whisper, whisper, and talk like this. Like, you're, you you be respectful. People who lean over in the movies are like, hey, man, like, I wonder if, you know, like, he's going to get attacked next. It's like, dude, shut up, you know? Or like, if people are like talking and laughing and stuff. So annoying. It's only ever happened to me, like, out of all my years seeing movies. Maybe like three or four times. But, uh... The worst, actually, you know, I say it's often teenagers. That is ageist. Because one time I did go to see a concert. Um, not like a, like a rock concert or anything, but it was like, um... Uh, it, it was like an older person's concert. I, it wasn't something that I was particularly interested in, but uh, I went with some people who wanted to see it, so I think it was like, um, whatever, actual musical instruments, not guitars and stuff, but like, it was the kind of thing where like, everyone was seated in like, sort of cinema style seats, we were looking at a stage, and there was a play and talking and or music at times. I think singing and stuff. And there was a row of like 50, 60, I think, I don't, don't think 60, I think that was too old, but like 50 year old, like parents or whatever. And some of them were clearly a little buzzed. I don't think anyone was drunk like a teenager would be, but like buzzed. And some of them were just blatantly talking. And me and people in my party turned around and asked them several times to stop talking. And it got to the point where like we weren't being polite anymore. And we were turning around and being like, hey, can you guys shut up? Like, like, literally like that, you know? And, like, to me, me saying that to somebody in public, I feel mortified and rude, and it's, I gotta build up the confidence to tell someone to shut up. But they were being ridiculous, and people in their own party were leaning over like, guys, stop! You know, but these two, it was two women, or three women, again, like, had to be in their 50s, and they just didn't give a fuck. They didn't care. And it was annoying and intrusive. And it was to the point where, like, I was thinking of calling over an usher and complaining about them because they just wouldn't shut up. And, yeah, so that that's probably the worst experience I ever had. You know, if it's a teenager or whatever at a movie, I almost... I, I still probably will ask them to be quiet, but I understand it more, at least. There's a kid up here for some reason. But, like, if you're 50 years old... And you're at something where you know you're supposed to be quiet and people are telling you to be quiet and you're not. You're just an asshole. Straight up. <laughs> I don't care if you have kids. I don't care where you are in your life. Get the hell out of there. You shouldn't be there. You're an adult. You know better. Like, come on. I think that's why it irked me so much is because they were old. They're older than me, man. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm all I'm all worked up again because of this. Anyway, Cliff's Edge collapsed in the heavy rain we had recently. You're right, Faye. You can do a big jump to get across it, but I'm scared. Um, okay, so what's a big jump? How could you forget? A big jump is done by pressing the uh, triangle while running. Oh. Okay. So that's how you do a big jump. So let's practice it. So if we're going like, whoa, ah, I see, okay. So I think we have to go this way. 
Oh, I didn't jump in time. <laughs> we get another encounter. Uh, you know, I don't mind random encounters in games as a general rule. But this is why sometimes I don't like them. If this were a game where all the enemies were clearly on the screen, and after you beat them all up, they were gone and gone, that's fine. But with random encounter games, the terrain always looks empty, but you're just walking around randomly getting attacked, first of all. So it's like being in a bad neighborhood. You're just constantly being, like, periodically mugged. But the other thing about it is it's like you can't clear out the area. So, like, I just want to get to that ridge and jump. But every time I fall down, I'm going to have to have like two or three fights to get back up there. And there's no way to avoid it. You can't kill all the coyotes and clear a zone out. So, yeah, constant random battles ugh, are a little tedious. It's like how many of these am I going to have to fight just so I can like do my jump? <laughs> Let's headbutt a dog. And we'll headbutt these things. Ooh. Ow! My nuts! Get out of here. Maybe I should actually be trying to use defense, because I'm really low on health. I'm leveling up like crazy, but I'm literally about to die. I'm, I'm doing very poorly here. In fact, how do we, um... We've got, like, Hobgoblin Jerky or something. Hob Jerk. Restores 50 hit points. Oh, there we go. A little bit of hob jerk will cure what ails ya. Okay. Don't screw up the jump this time. Oh my god! <laughs> I was just positioning for the jump! <sighs> Alright, let's let's dance, bozos. Take you to Pound Town. One ninja headbutt at a time. Give me your jerky. Oh, zero damage. I'm gonna eat your corpse and heal all my wounds. Alright, we, we killed him. I don't know if we got any jerky off of that. I kind of skipped that screen too quickly. Alright, here we go. Jump! Oh, God. Alright. We're on the other side. Try not to fall down now. Wait, what is this? Receive Aquasol. Wait, we've been here before. Oh, screw it. Well, the nice thing is by the time we find this doctor, we're going to be nice and leveled up. But, I, you know what? I think the Mario RPG, um, those games perfected the random encounter wherein there'd be enemies on the map. And when you bumped into them, you would go into a little battle like this. But then once they were all gone, an area was pretty much clear. So it, like, it it simultaneously had encounters, but it empowered the player to see where they were going to happen and make strategic decisions about whether they wanted to avoid an area or whatnot. Um, but yeah, I have literally... Fuck. No idea how to get to the stupid professor. I, I wasn't paying enough... I mean, I tried to pay attention to the terrain. I thought I knew where we were going. But I guess not. I think I jumped to the wrong place. Anyway, we'll just keep leveling up. Eventually, presumably, these guys will get super easy. And we'll just crush them with one blow. Like, if I'm at level 6, are these guys even still gonna... ...hurt me? Okay, we can't... Oh my god! How many seconds did we get? Two seconds? This is ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know if you're supposed to grind this area out like crazy or if it's just because I'm like running in circles, but I have to admit the random encounters in this part of the game are actually getting quite annoying. Quite annoying and quite tedious. I think another thing, you know one way you could try to balance random encounters without making it too annoying on the player? is you could have an auto combat option where if you encounter enemies that are like you know x percentage below your level you could just click auto battle and it will be like you won the battle you got two hob jerky and lost five hit points and it's like okay you know like if, 
a battle that is that far beneath you, you don't want to have to micromanage, right? Um, and I think I just saw the ridge I was supposed to jump across. So, like, it'd be real... Like, I get it takes away one of the core elements of the gameplay, which is the combat. But right now, these guys are just basically wasting my time. There might even be a way to fight them where I don't even lose any hit points if I use different attacks. I should experiment. Alright, I will try that next time. The next unnecessary battle against those guys, I'm gonna see what I can do. So this ridge right here. I, in fact, I'm not even gonna waste time because probably... Oh my god, and I didn't jump, and I landed, and I landed in an encounter. <laughs> oh dear god. Uh, but you guys saw the ridge I was trying to jump over. Uh, but yeah, I know a core element of this game is literally this. It's the combat. Okay, now... How do I... I have one more action, but I guess I have to use it on this guy? It'd be so much cooler if you could do, like, two punches to one guy and then, like, three to another or something. I don't know. I don't know what the point of those different action point leveled attacks is. Or if you could use two attacks, two action points to attack and then one to defend, maybe? Maybe you need to use defense first. I should try that, I guess. We'll figure it out. The developers who made this were clearly thinking something. Oh, thank God. Now, my fear was that we were going to get into an encounter in the air or, like, right before I jumped and it was going to screw up the jump. But, like, five seconds, man. It's like a five-second max. Headbutt that guy to death. Alright, I'm going to try this defense thing. I just want to see what happens. Defense. Okay, I still took damage and I didn't kill him. If I just attacked him... Oh, I missed! Alright. Oh my god, I missed again? What's happening? Okay, how, let's try this, like, one attack thing. There we go. Oh, maybe I wasn't killing those guys with the three punches. Maybe you actually have to kill a guy, and then you'll get that extra action point back for something else. Okay. There's more experimenting to do. What's this sign say? This way to the doctor's house. I thought it was going to say, beware, random encounters. Zoom... All right, Doc, you have no idea how hard it was to get... What is your house? That thing isn't... That place cannot be structurally... ...sound. That's crazy. Um... Guess we'll go in the top door. Kinda cool, actually. Oh, and we'll climb to the top. Oh, look at that. Do you want to look through the telescope? Sure. That's cool. What are we gonna see? Oh, wow. That's cool. It's basic, but... You know... PS1, so... Cut it some slack. I think I saw the village over there. That's cool. Hmm. Fun little uh, mechanic there. Probably, I don't know if that's ever going to serve a purpose, but go back down. Oh, what what is happening? Yes, that was weird. Um, all right. Where is this doc? Doc, it's me, Marty. You got to send me back. Or no, he says, I, I just sent you back to the future. And he says, well, I'm back. I'm back from the future. And then he goes, great, Scott. Just passes out. Ah, 
classic movies. I'll never get tired citing Back to the Future endlessly. Oh, is this the doc? Uh, Faye, welcome. Hello, you. Where's the doc? Your husband is tinkering with his junk out in the back. It's... I, I know they didn't mean it in a filthy way, but there's there is a bit of innuendo there. <laughs> Although maybe it's intentional. The way they're kind of phrasing some of these sentences, it kind of seems like maybe the developers were trying to be a little uh, dirty in their humor. Who knows, man? They're Japanese. They could be anything from naive to like totally like tentacle porn addicts. Um, trying to instill this game with a subtle uh, level of sexual innuendo. Oh, an explosion. I mean, the waitress did hit on me, so that's something. What's going on? There's no- this is no good. Why do you use such inferior parts? Oh, look at that. That's where you were. Oh, Faye, good to see you. You're right, Doc. What's all this? I thought I would try to restore the land crab. The explosion was nothing to worry about. It happens all the time. Uh, could you wait a while? I'm just about ready to call it a day. There's something interesting in that storeroom. Why not take a look? Okay, Doc, I will, but please hurry. Right, what do we got in here? Uh, so this is what the doc was talking about. Let me see. So interesting about it. It's a giant engine. Oh, what the heck? That's cool. <laughs> Steam. In case you were wondering if this was a steampunk game, the answer is yes. What is this? It's a weird, mystical music box that will steal your soul. Anything this beautiful and magical is clearly made by demons to trick us. You think if demons made something to steal your soul, it would, like, look like it was from hell itself? It would literally look like it was, you know, made by angels. Because that's how they get you, man. That's how the demons get you. What do you think? Not bad, huh? Doc? Did, did you make this? Sorry to have kept you waiting, old boy. Okay. Music is a mysterious thing. Sometimes it makes people remember things that they do not expect. Many thoughts, feelings, memories, things that are almost forgotten, regardless of whether listener desires to remember them or not. Doc. What is this? It was excavated from some old ruins and is still under repair. Obviously, it is an audio device of some type. Long ago, people would listen to this melody, just as we are doing now. If the doc tries to hold my hand, I'm out of here. At times, they would have been cheered up, while times, they would have been made to cry. Yes, doc, you're describing genres of music. It is a thing. By the way, what brings you here today? Oh yeah, that's right. Alice asked me to borrow some camera equipment from you. Oh yes, her wedding is tomorrow, right? Understood. Well, we had better get ready then. Oh, and dinner should be ready soon. Would you like to join us? Would I ever? I was hoping you would ask. I'm young and literally hungry. I still have some cleaning up to do out here. Would you mind giving Midori some company back in the house? Sure thing, boss. You take your time, dude. I'll just be inside chilling with your, your babe. Not your, your babe, babe, but like your baby, babe. Like the little one. I will totally watch that girl for you. Doc, I feel strange when I listen to this music. I feel something warm inside. No comment. Thought of a thousand gross and silly jokes. I made none. I'd like credit for that, please. Is Timothy and Alice's wedding tomorrow? Really tomorrow? Might actually be better to live an ordinary life in this condition as a son of man. What does that even mean? Better just the gyro, at least. Huh? 
demon soul seal in time, I'm telling you. Oh, yep. Something's happening. I don't think there's going to be a wedding, guys. This cannot be. It's... Is this an omen? Hmm, now what is going to happen? I don't know. So it just broke randomly? Your cooking never fails to impress me, Yui. Thank you for such a delicious meal. You're welcome. If you like my cooking that much, then I'd be happy to cook for you anytime, Faye. I will bring the equipment you need to the village tomorrow morning myself. It does not exactly make me feel comfortable to have you handle such delicate instruments, I'm afraid. Uh, where have I heard that line before? Hey, see? They are making innuendo jokes. It's not just me, guys. These Japanese developers are... Got their dirty little fingerprints all over the dialogue here. Alright, off we go. Beat up some wolves in the dark, why not? Well, good night, Doc. Yes, good night. Oh, please be careful. Ah, I mean, the path is dangerous when it is so dark. Trust me, Doc, it's dangerous when it's light, too. There's nothing to worry about. Well, anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. I like to imagine the Doc and his family coming down the mountain to go to the wedding, fist fighting a bunch of coyotes on their way down, and then at the end of the day, fist fighting them to come back up home. Like, all right, honey, get your gloves. We're going out. We're going to the store. We're going to have to beat up a couple of wolves on the way. Why, why did we ever decide to settle in Wolf Alley? I will never know. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Now, what happens if we go down this way over here? Oh, what is this? Aquasol. Sweet. Okay, all the coyotes seem to be sleeping, which I do not necessarily mind. Huh? What's that? They're able to use the 3D environments and the camera really well in this game, I have to say. Like, they're using it pretty dynamically. I also like how when you're in a house and you rotate the camera, the wall you're directly looking at that would be in your way of seeing what's in the room immediately goes invisible. It's a subtle but intuitive and nice feature, I think. Giants! Fee! Doc, some flying objects went towards Lahan. So you saw them too. Judging by their shadows, they appear to be a group of gears from our neighborhood, our, our neighbor country, Kislev. Those were gears? Oh, it's happening again! They're headed directly for Lahan. Ones I just saw? Let us make haste. Right, but wait, what about the camera? Should we go back for it real quick? I know Al's really, okay, never mind. We're forgetting about the camera. Can you tell her that I did remember, though, please? Really hoping to get in tight with her, buddy. Doc? <laughs> Alright. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Is this just ha what happened at the beginning? Maybe now... Oh. I guess when the game started... Interesting. So we jumped back in time, and now we're re-watching the intro? Hmm. Timothy! Dr. Uzuki! Doctor! They just came out of nowhere and landed right in our village! I know! What on earth are they doing starting a battle here? Are you all okay? Yes, but it's Dan. He- We can't find him! I'll go look one more time. Alice, go ahead and get out of the village! No, Timothy! Wait! You and Alice and the rest of the village should evacuate to a safer location. Doc, you know I just can't leave Dan behind. Timothy. I understand how you feel, but leave the rest up to Faye and me. The primary thing you should be concerned about is your own safety. Timothy, your responsibility is to protect Alice. Timothy, but... It's just as the Doc says, the two of us, two of you should get out of here, blah, blah, blah. I can't read right now. 
Blah 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 You guys go, we stay. Alright. Have we decided yet? People are now agreeing to the plan. People are having second thoughts about the plan. People are once again reassuring one another about the plan. The plan is being restated. Characters are finally moving. That it took like twice, three times as many dialogue boxes as was necessary to convey what was happening there. Um. All right, but Doc, you be careful, okay? You do, Vey. All right, I'm looking for a kid, I guess. While robots try and blow the place up. Okay. Have they come for any reason, or just to be dicks? Whoa! Well, oh, here comes a big robot. He's come to start trouble, man. This wobbly camera work again. I'm really, I'm really curious for people who've played this game. Is this a glitch in my emulator, or was it supposed to be this way? Because it seems, uh, what the heck? Seems like an odd choice to make the whole thing wobble. What am I noticing? Who is that? <laughs> okay, that's weird. Also, what kind of pants am I wearing? What is it? Do I have a girdle on? What is that? Or actually, it looks like a WWE or WWF championship belt. Maybe I I won WrestleMania recently, and I'm wearing the championship belt. Faye, wait, Faye! I'm not talking to you, Doc. I got a thing going on. I'm trying to figure something out, I think. Okay. Do not do this, Fay. You must not fight here. Fay. Man, the mech walking sounds cool. Am I gonna beat up a robot? Oh my god. Linguistic modifier enabled. Booster off. Power output. Hyper mode. This is so cool. Look at all those stats and stuff. That's really neat. Identified. Lamb Ignis. Dialect. No piloting experience. Easy mode. Set. Synchronizing. Inputting interfer interface with pilot's normal reflex time. Pilot mode about to enter 1200 units of fuel. Utilize command ring. In the upper left screen to select attack. Okay. Power and fuel usage differs with different attacks. Charge restores 30 fuel units. Warning. Enemy gears are now preparing to attack. Terminating help mode. Oh, cool. Let's do it. Oh, we ninja kicked him to the face. Oh, he bulleted me. I guess that's technically the word is shot. <laughs> he bulleted me! <laughs> Boom! Ninja kick! Oh, we took him down. That is so cool. Hand-to-hand -hand mech fights are awesome. So wait, how am I piloting this mech? I stole it? I don't 100% understand. Oh, I missed. Uh-oh. Oh, he got me right in the legs. Right where it counts. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I want a gun, man. Okay, hold on, what are my other attacks? It just says fuel 30, 20, and 10. Oh, eat that. Mission accomplished. And that gives you roughly the same amount of experience as beating up dogs. Oh no, it doesn't! That's like... Beating up a thousand dogs. 
Damn. Let's take this mech suit and go fight the coyotes. Man, the user interface, like, seeing all those, like, stats and, like, the rotating reticle and... Like, it looked like an Iron Man, uh, HUD screen. It was really cool. Oh, here comes another robot. Yes! Reinforcements, huh? Oh, this is totally right from the intro. Okay, so we're replaying the intro that we saw. On my right, too! Damn it! How many of them are you? Are there? Oh, another one. The Mohawk one. He's the bad guy. Oh, they're all shooting me, man. I can't hold out. I guess there's no choice. But to fight. Okay. And I guess we know how this battle turns out, because I guess I lost it. It's so interesting, because I thought... In the opening, I went in this battle and I lost. That's how I got amnesia and got taken to the town. Faye! The way you are fighting... Oh no, this is not good. If he awakens here... Doc? Dan! <laughs> Just falls right off the... Alright, that's one way to do it. What on earth are you doing here? They didn't even bother to animate like a jump sprite. Just literally like... Ooh. Reminds me of Poochie. My planet needs me. Boop, 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 boop. And just like, uh, dragging the animation cell off the screen. Simpsons. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's okay. It's an old reference, guys. I just couldn't bear to think of leaving my sister's wedding dress behind. You went back for the dress? Return to save your sister's wedding dress? It's, uh, thoughtful, but also nuts, my friend. Get out of here, you little balding goblin. You're gonna get, gonna get everyone killed. It appears that they are after that gear phase in. Question mark? Phase? Inside that monster? Faye is that monster, my young boy. The war never stopped within him. Let's just say every day has been a battle battle he can't ever hope to win but a battle which he can never stop fighting let's go all right we're gonna get to play more or is this heart-wrenching moment just gonna go on forever now here comes this guy I knew you were still in the village I'm glad you're okay <sighs> oh this dialogue man oh Another robot. Or mech. As the term goes. Don't shoot! These people have nothing to do with you! Alright. We get to fight them? I'm down for a fight. Okay, here we go. Uh, Timothy! Out of the way, you bastards! Let's get him, boys. Bitty boop, bitty boop. Attack. Okay. Oh, they're just straight up firing at me. Stop it! I said stop it! Stop it! Yeah, fight? Oh, I got shot. Oh. What is happening in this guy's head? Where am I? I thought I was in the fight. Oh, man! You know what? Oh, jeez. No one does, uh... Mech animation... 
like the Japanese. Like, they're just... You know, the OG mech stuff, like Robotech and stuff. I mean, that was the basis... Again, not to keep going back to this well, but... The original, uh, Battletech, which was actually called Battle Droids, was based off of, uh, they licensed out a handful of, uh, mecha from Robotech. So, um, yeah. That's the thing, and that's kind of cool. Huh. Where am I? Where indeed... But yeah, no one animates mechs like the Japanese. It's just... They're good at it. They do a good job. I guess no one else tries to. It's not like Germany has a big animation business around giant robots, you know. They don't really produce too many mech-themed media. Nor France. Uh, nor Argentina. Brazil. Madagascar. Pakistan, the Philippines, there's, uh, actually the Philippines may do it. There's many areas of the world that don't focus on mech-based media. You murderer! Dan! Question mark, Dan, what do you mean? Faye, it was because of you had to get in that monster. Alice and Timothy, the people of the village are all, you killed everyone. Oh, I did. Oh, whoops. My bad. Why did you have to fight in the middle of the village? How do you even know how to operate such a monster? Mother. Where's mother? See, I told you so. I said, allowing someone we knew nothing about into the village would spell disaster. How it hurts. So, wait, who... I guess it was like a shadow version of me that was piloting it that brought the mech to me? I don't understand how the mech got into my hands. Also, I killed Alice? Murderer, my sister. Give me back my sister. Oh, God. This is hardcore, man. I, I didn't realize I killed her. Um, Faye had no control over the malfunction of that gear. I know that. But, but... I hate you! Did I seriously kill Alice? We're not going to go back in time or save her. She's not, like, alive in the hill somewhere. We actually murdered her. Timothy I get, because he had to go, because clearly there was something between me and Alice. I thought Timothy might die in the opening, but... Damn. It's like a Game of Thrones style. I mean, we weren't that committed to Alice, but still, she seemed like his love interest... There's no guarantee that reinforcements from yesterday's unit are not going to come. They will probably want to know what happened to their comrades. You stay here. I do not think the atmosphere is going to be very joyful, if you know what I mean. It's probably best for you both. Uh, and all the village is here. I guess you're right. Disaster happened because I was here. Wow, so I got exiled from the village. And I have amnesia. Don't know who I am. Murdered a woman who loved me. And the friend, best friend of mine, who she was going to marry. You know, I guess it takes care of that problem. No lover, there's no triangle when you blow two vertices of that triangle away. Now your lover's triangle is just a lover's point. Because <laughs> there's nobody else. I understand, Doc. Well, anyway, please take care of the rest of the things here. Alright, wow. Did not expect the game to take this turn. It's, bold. it's brave. Brave and bold. Damn, one last look at everyone that I've disappointed. Everyone whose lives I've shattered, ruined, for unknown reasons. I still don't fully understand what happened. I guess I got in a mech, piloted it, it malfunctioned and exploded and obliterated everyone in like a five block radius. So the best thing to do is get back in that thing. But we should get out of town. My sister, give me back my sister. Gah. Well. Wait, am I not taking the robot? Take the mech, dude. Dude, take the mech! Where are you going? <laughs> no! <laughs> now I have to go back to fighting wolves hand-to-hand. -hand. Okay. 
Well, what an opening to the game of uh, Xeno Blade here, I guess. I was going to say Xeno Chronicles. It, wait, what game? What, what is the name of this game? I, I can't even look it up right now. Xeno something. The Legend of the Dastardly Mechtastrophe. Um... One of the games in the book, A Thousand of Video Games, you must play before you die. Even though we've only spent a short time with this one, basically just sort of playing through the prologue and getting to the beginning. They were nice enough to preview a little mech combat with us. We saw a bit of the story. We saw a bit of the hand-to-hand -hand RPG stuff. I think this is a cool game. And honestly, um, if I had this back in the day, I would definitely keep going with it. We're going to stop here today because I think we've reached a natural break point. But I like the sort of mix of fantasy RPGing with this like steampunk and mech stuff. The mech battle was the coolest part. Seems to be like an amped up version of the regular combat so I don't know if the mechanics change all that much but definitely we're doing way more damage. Like to a dog we're doing like 21 damage. To a mech we're doing like 8,000 or it was like 400 or something but still it is cool. Um, oh, I had more action points. I just canceled that attack. I didn't realize. So if you miss, you can... Oh, so we have four action points now. That's pretty cool. Um, I still don't fully understand how to best use all my action points. And, like, if you kill an enemy, let's say you go and use two action points to kill an enemy, what happens to the other two action points? Can you do anything with them, or is it just done? Seems to be just done every time, but... If you could do more, then it would incentivize me to use some of the different attacks, but so far, no dice. So I'm not unsure what to make of the action point system. But overall, I think this is, uh, for a PlayStation 1 game that would have come out back in the day, I mean, the graphics are really cool. I like the mix of 3D and 2D stuff. I like the camera work. Um... You know, the story is fine. I love the setting of the story. The actual, you know, like, anime story about, oh, it's a wedding and this and that and stuff. I mean, that stuff is all fine. It's sort of cookie-cutter standard RPG stuff. Um, and it's kind of basic, but again, it's, it's fine. Um, it's not like incredibly annoying or boring or anything but i didn't find that part like the most compelling part of the game but again fine so yeah the mech stuff though that's pretty badass that's pretty cool um and yeah i, I think all things considered I would definitely have played this game to keep going further. And I do have to give them credit. You know, I'm saying the story is fairly cookie cutter, but one element of the story is like killing Timothy and Alice at the beginning, even if it's accidentally. That is bold, man. That is bold. And uh, so I have to give the developers uh, and the writers of the story a bit of props for that. So it isn't 100% cookie cutter, but... Um, anyway, what do you guys think of the Xeno story here, Legend of the Mercenary Mechs? Is it a game that you played back in the day? Do you have fond memories of it? Tips or tricks? Anything else you would like to share? And what do you think of my assessment of it here? Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. Guys, I always enjoy hearing your takes on these games as well. And hopefully, whether you've enjoyed the game or not, uh, you had some fun hanging out and just checking it out with me here today. If you did, don't forget to like the video and come back soon for yet another video yet another game in the 1001 games you must play before you die series until next time my friends you take care of yourselves and we will see you soon alrighty guys peace